days after Ryan passed away, some of the friends needed to do something. So they designed the first pink camo Ryan original t-shirt and sold it on Custom Inc. And they knew they were doing it and they knew that they could give donations. And then it was on for a week and they, they closed it down and then people were calling Custom Inc and calling us saying we need them. So they opened it up again and they sold more shirts. And it wasn't like reality, you know, like they kept saying how many shirts they sold and they were to wear them on Ryan's birthday. So at the end they sold, it was like over 12 or 1300 shirts and one of the, Richie, called me and said, who do we make the check out to? And I'm like, what check? He goes, the check from the money we raised. I'm like, we don't have a foundation, but make it out to me. I'll call the attorney today and I'll get the foundation set up. He goes, okay. And then Richie, how much money is it? I don't know, I think it's like $20,000. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, I'll call the attorney and get the foundation set up. Like I can't have a check made out to me for $20,000. Um, and then we went through and they only made $5 a shirt. So if you start doing the numbers, people just that's donated true. money and gave extra and that's how, the, that's how it got formed. Our, our cause is to be nice to people, is to be yourself, love who you are. There's no big grand scheme behind it. There's no big charity that everyone's heard of before. But people hear it and you realize they want to be part of it because they want that in their life. We've had people say, seen the kids in their shirts before at fundraising say, what are you doing? And they tell them the story. And a man in a diner handed the girls $100 and said, I don't need to know anymore. Just for what you're saying, it's worth my money. So, and the amount of people that show up, the hundreds of people that have shown up to events, um, people like, you know, you guys coming and supporting us, it's, it's really very humbling. I think there were just so many things that made him special and unique, but one that really always stood out to me was how he could love so hard in such like a humble and kind of low-key way. Like you never really saw it until you really got to know him. When you first looked at him, you just thought he was like a regular teenage boy, but the more you realized like his friendships and how deep and meaningful they were to him and how much he contributed to them and helped people, um, you really got to see like how loving and caring he was and how much he would do for someone that he loves. No matter what the situation was, he always kept his kid-like emotions and energy with everything. Any like scary situation, serious situation, just how he was, he just kept, kept it real and down to earth. Just a person that always wanted to go and have fun and live life to the fullest while also like taking care of his friends just holding it down at all times. I think what made Ryan so special was him just being Ryan. Like he really marched to the beat of his own drum. He never cared what anybody else thought of what he was doing. He always did what made him happy. Especially in this day and age of like social media and a lot of people are out there judging you. He was always just trying to like make the best out of what he could and he was pretty good at that. You could wake up one day in the morning and if your goal is to have fun or like just to like get the most out of your day, you would call him. He, he went into something and he was like, even if it turns bad, we're gonna make good out of it. Like, let's have fun, let's smile, like, let's laugh, let's just enjoy our time. Like, it, even, even in bad situations too, he would always have a smile. Like, he would always flip it to be like, you know what, let's stop focusing on it. Let's stop focusing on this, like, let's have fun. And it was always, he always had this like, attraction to him where it was like he knows what he's doing he's so happy with himself that it's so and in, especially in high school nowadays it's hard to find that and so when you find somebody who is so 100 percent with everything they're doing and with themselves it's 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 like magnetic um i remember we just the friday night we just spent back to my house we were sleeping over, I think my parents were out the next day, so we slept in late, and I'm in my bed, he's in the guest room over, and it's like 11.30, and I'm still in bed, I sleep late, and I hear this toy microphone going off, or this toy megaphone going off, out my window, right next to my bed, and he's chirping to the birds as I'm waking up, and I lean over, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm waking up this morning, early morning and I'm like I need to sleep and he just kept on going and just chirping out the window so so funny um, we had one time 
it was during one of the soccer tournament seasons and we were driving everywhere from Philly to Boston and we were just in the car. And we went into a Dunkin' Donuts and as we were leaving, some guy was walking out with like his phone and this tremendous iced tea and just walked like hard straight into the glass wall, not even the door. And the two of us sat there and went hysterical laughing. And then we're like, this is mean, we have to go. But then we just kept laughing. But it was times like that. He would just make you laugh, you know? He would, um, he would say something silly or he would just start to dance. Like if you knew you were having a bad day, he just made you laugh. Mid boat ride, we were just like all hanging out. He grabs me and he's like, Sophie, I have to tell you something. Like, I'm so excited to tell you something. And I'm like, Oh God, what do, what do you have to tell me? What do you have to tell me? And he sits me down and he has like his arm around me and he's like so happy, like he's beaming, telling me this news he has for me. And I just remember like looking at him being like, I feel so lucky to be a person that you come to when you're happy, that you want to tell somebody, like you want to tell me something that makes you happy, that makes me happy. I love being somebody that you come to. Like, and there was just like a sparkle in his eye, like while he was telling me something he was happy about. And like that sparkle was always there, but in that moment I was just like, wow. It's there right now. I think it's kind of like an overall memory, but um, I would always go on really long car rides with him. He would always ask me to pick him up from parties because he wouldn't want mom or dad to. Um, so I would pick him up and we would drive around for an hour or two, even though it was already late. Um, we'd get pizza, we'd get ice cream, and we'd just kind of like listen to music. We didn't always have to talk, but it was kind of like our little safe space. Like we would go there and we would talk and kind of get everything out there. So it was nice to like have that connection like in the car and like have it be like our little space. Brian was always like the jokester outside. He, he always made people laugh. Whenever he was with his friends, he would pretend to be like hard and tough. And like when we'd be like in the hallways, he like would try to be like too cool to like acknowledge me and I'm like, you're coming home later and you're snuggling with me, your mom and your dogs, like, you're not that tough. He loved to come home and, you know, snuggle and watch TV, He'd lay on the floor with his dogs. He would, you know, he said he hated it, but he would love to, you know, give hugs and like lay in bed with us and watch TV, you know, Nicole and I, um, he was a mush. And I think people that really knew him knew that side of him because they got to see it. He just really cared about his friends like a lot and if like if I ever needed help or if anyone else ever needed help he'd always be there. Sometimes to other people he came off like he didn't really care that much like about things but he really did but he just like he showed it when nobody was looking like he was one of those guys who like at all times was super nice but just if he really cared for you you like you, you would know. When you became his friend, it became like really clear how generous he is. Uh, you didn't even have to ask him to share anything. He wanted to share. It was like, he wanted to make sure that everybody had what he had so that they could experience the happiness like he was gaining from whatever he was sharing. And it was always just like, even if you weren't best friends, like he wanted you to have what he had in the moment. It took me a really long time to like realize this, but like he was always like my best friend. Like I had friends from home, I had friends at school, I had friends like with my extracurriculars, but at the end of the day, like he was like always my best friend. And I didn't really realize that until like we got older. Cause obviously when you're younger, you bicker, you fight, like He's the annoying little brother that wants to copy you and do everything that you do. But like the more like we like did things together on our own, like without our parents and like our friends would kind of mesh together. Like I really realized that like he was like always like my number one best friend, which like took a long time to realize, but yeah. Just really a reality check. Just like life just keeps going on and on and you have to face it with adver like any problem, adversity, you have to just keep going. And I know that's what he wants me to do. That's no, I know that's what he wants everyone to do. And I just know that deep down in my heart, I know he's looking upon us, like I just said. He's looking at all of us and he remembers that we care about him deeply. And I don't think any of us, any of our close friends are gonna forget him, ever. Don't take anything for granted. Um, if, so always say I love you to the people that you love the most. Always just be a nice person, be kind to everyone because 
you never know what's going to happen. Uh, that was a freak accident, and I kind of didn't really get to say goodbye to him the way I, I would wanted to, obviously. But um, just just live life to the fullest, um, and yeah, just don't take anything for granted because you never know what's going to happen next. To not take everything around me for granted, and just like appreciate all my friends. Uh, after Ryan's passing, I learned how close like a community can get. Luckily, we're a part of a smaller community, but it really, it really was a surprise of like how everyone just came so close together and supported one another. Even if it was someone you never talked to, like maybe you would start talking to them, and for all you know, you'd become friends with them. As soon as it happened, everybody was instantly like looking out for everybody. Like nobody was, nobody was left alone or like left unchecked for, like everybody was checking on each other and it was really cool. After his passing, I realized how connected we really were. Even though we didn't have to hang out every day to be best friends, like he had made an impact on not only me, but like this entire community. And I had learned that like he had a relationship with everybody, like not just me, like it wasn't just me suffering. Like, and I would look around and it wasn't just our best friends suffering either. It wasn't just our school suffering. It was the entire community. And I had realized that he had touched every single person he met. No matter if it was just like a one-time greeting, everybody knew his name and like who he was. And it's crazy because like people I didn't even know. I didn't know the names of, I never had seen them or heard of them from Ryan's mouth, but they had come together with us too. And like showed that he made a difference on them as well. And it was crazy to see how many people he could touch in just 15 years. And even now he still touches people. I, I wherever I go and I'm wearing this or I'm wearing the shirt, People are like, what is that? And I explain to them and they're like, wow. And then they're, they're like, where can I transfer money to? And I'm like, his story touches everybody. It's, it's, it's extreme, it's not even surprising at this point. It's just amazing. It's heartwarming. I love it. Yeah, being true to oneself, definitely. Uh, Ryan was definitely true to who he was. Wore, wore the clothes that he wanted to wear at all times. Uh, we all kind of gave him a hard, not a hard time, but we all just kind of laughed sometimes at what he was wearing, but he didn't care. He just wore whatever he wanted, and that's kind of what inspired the shirts that we got. The, the, the original colors, like the pink and white and camouflage. Uh, he just wore whatever he wanted, did whatever he wanted to do, and lived life how he wanted to live. And uh, it's a testimony to who he, who he was. He really just lived how he wanted to live. And I, I admired him for that. I think it's the third attribute where he just doesn't care what other people think or there might be four, I don't know. He just decided to go all out on one of the outfits and cowboy hat, crazy shorts, everything. He loved his outfits. He loved his Hawaiian shirts and he just didn't care what other people thought about them. It was hilarious and he just loved styling out. Maybe a little attention getting, but he loved it. Ryan, <laughs> his style was nothing you'd see in a magazine, I'll tell you that. Like, it was always, like, tie-dye or just, like, superheroes or, like, weird. And, like, he would walk around and be like, if you don't like it, I don't care. Like, I look good. He would literally be, I'd be like, you look so bad. He's like, I look amazing. What are you talking about? And he would be wearing the most mismatched, like, weirdest outfit I had ever seen. And he just walked around, like, nobody cared and nobody did because it was him and he worked everything he put on like he would wear that stuff and it wouldn't be okay if anybody else did it but he was doing it and he almost like would be able to make fun of himself like he would wear his crocs on the boat and we'd all be like what are you doing why do you have crocs on and he's like shut up i look good <laughs> and it would just like make everybody laugh because no matter what he was doing he was him to the fullest like it no matter how he looked or like how anybody thought of him, like he was him and he didn't really care what anybody else had to think. Simple. It would be hanging out with the dogs, laying in bed until 11, um, just, just hanging out. You know, maybe go to the beach or on the water because it was one of his favorite places, but if I could have him one more day, it would just, just hug him and tell him I love him and just do what we used to do as, as you know, Nicole and I as, as a family. We would just, we, we were cuddlers, we're still cuddlers, like, I hug you guys, I hug everybody. Um, it's just to do that, just to be simple. Um, definitely be warmer. He was really, loved the summer, um, loved the beach, loved the water. Um, I think like going back to like my favorite memories with him, 
um, I would love to just like go on a drive with him. Like we, ha I have a Jeep, so like roof down on the Jeep, like grabbing food, just driving around. Like obviously he's on aux because he would never let me play my music. Um, but just kind of hanging out together. Cause like that was, I feel like my happy place with him. It was never doing something like very concrete. It was always just the little moments like of silence or the little moments of us like sharing our lives with each other like while in the car like listening to music like feeling that peace I think. I th it, would, it would probably be a very simple day really. I would all I would want to do is just talk to him. I'd probably want to just hang out here in the house with him with the dogs and Janice and like the just hang out and probably go on the boat and go on the water because he loved the water and just like go back to like the days that like it used to be like was just like uh, just doing the things that we love you know just a normal day uh, just to have one of those back would just be amazing perfect day definitely wouldn't be this weather it would be it would be summertime probably on the boat just driving around and talking about it, catching up on stuff just all day just on the boat together I think we would go on the boat and just sit on the boats all day and just hang out. I think just like being with him would be good enough. Like in the harbor with like a bunch of people and just starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, going all the way to the sunset and that would just be my perfect day. Definitely the boats. We'd just go out on the boats, uh, get a big tie up going. I could, if I could just change the weather, weather to have it be 80 degrees, that'd be that'd be good. But uh, jump off the can, just do all the stuff that we always did, and then after that, head back to the pool house, jump in the pool, and just have a good time, hang out all night. Uh, the perfect day would probably be on my boat, going going to see other friends on their boats, and staying on the water all day. I think the water has a great a great part of Ryan's life, and it, it always will be. I knew I wasn't gonna see him again. Torturous. But maybe I'd at least be able to say the things I needed to say. Um, and thanking him. Because the one thing I have learned through all this is that from the way he treated people, I've seen people change the way they treat people. He's brought together a community of people that would never have been together and they're gonna make the world's a better place and I believe the reason he was here was to make us all stop and realize we all have to make the world's a better place um I think just coming back home and like being with our dogs because like he loves them a lot <laughs> um I knew like that was like one of his happiest places and like it was always like a really happy place for me to watch him with them so I think just coming home, playing outside with them, and just like hanging out, just like a very chill day. I don't need anything fancy, and just like something relaxing. I think we all have to live life's journey and take tragedies like this and turn them into something that we could all be proud of. So every day I just try to live my life so at the end of the day, Nicole and Ryan are proud of me. And we laugh, I've adopted like 20 something teenagers, like they're all proud of me at the end of the day. Um, so I think, you know, if we could all just do that, you know, just smile at someone, be nice to someone, be a friend to someone, um, I think we'll just make everybody proud at the end of the day. <laughs>